So if you're watching this video, odds are you love Zootopia, which is great because I do as well. So let's talk about it for about 15 or so odd minutes, shall we? Something you'll notice about Zootopia is that the movie absolutely loves referencing other Disney properties. Seriously, you'll soon realize that there's a good chunk of the entries on this list that are in some form or fashion exactly that. The easiest to spot, but probably most entertaining in my opinion, is the pile of movies that Duke Weasleton has seen selling bootlegs of. Titles include Pig Hero 6, Meowna, Wreck-It Rhino, and Floats in 2 all obvious homages to famous Disney flicks. What makes this even better is that a couple of them were references to movies that weren't even out as of the release of this movie. Moana didn't come out until a few months after Zootopia, and Frozen 2 was released a whopping three years later. But that didn't stop a pair of little elephants dressing up like Frozen's Anna and Elsa. Sure, they probably just saw the first movie, but maybe they snagged themselves a copy of one of Duke's bootlegs. Who knows? If you've ever seen a rabbit in the wild, you'll know that when given room to run, rabbits are pretty speedy. So a family of rabbits having an automobile might seem kind of unnecessary. But Judy Hopp's parents are farmers, so it makes sense that they have a pickup truck. Did you notice, though, that the truck itself is a rabbit? At least that's what the imagery suggests, with the grill on the front featuring some massive buck teeth pretty reminiscent of a bunny's famous overbite. Either that or the teeth are a subtle reference to Mater from the Cars franchise. Actually, now that I think about it, it seems a lot less likely. You never know, though. Zootopia has a ton of references to other Disney properties in it, so it could be a thing. Trucks aren't the only things that are given animal-themed makeovers. At one point early on, we got a look at Judy's iPod, which looks like one of the later generation Nanos, specifically the sixth generation ones when they were all just small square touchscreens. You know what I mean. Anyways, on her iPod, we caught a glimpse of quite a few different musical acts that Judy is presumably a fan of. Included amongst them are some greats like the Fur Fighters, Fleetwood Yak, and the Beagles. Obviously, these are animalistic plays on the real-world bands, the Foo Fighters, Fleetwood Mac, and of course, the Beatles. Swap the Beatles out for the Stones, and Judy and I have a near-identical taste in music. Though I don't think I'd be too stoked to listen to Gazelle, even if quite a few of her songs are references to iconic Disney tunes, such as Let It Goat, Part of Your Wool, and Era Bunny Nights. Can't really say no to a classic Disney tune. Want to get people super psyched at your next karaoke rager? Bust out the Disney songs. Everyone in that place is going to be right there with you singing along. Or you could just do Sweet Caroline. In my experience, that works as well. The cops of Zootopia PD are some of the most entertaining background characters in the entire movie. One of them, a wolf, does something that still to this day, even years after the film's release, gets a chuckle out of me every single time. When the chief assigns a few of his officers to undercover duty, the wolf officer quickly throws on a mask that makes him look like a humble sheep. This is a reference to the old adage, wolf in sheep's clothing, which refers to the idea of a villain or someone otherwise bringing ill will being disguised as a member of the flock. Not really a saying that I'd imagine many kids would know, so it's more or less a nice little joke for the older audience members to be sure. Disney is often seen by people as the premier animation studio in the world. However, there are some who would argue that that title actually belongs to Studio Ghibli. The people that brought the world the masterpieces Princess Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle, as well as countless others. Even Disney themselves recognizes their greatness, and as such, they made a reference to one of Ghibli's most iconic and recognizable characters within Zootopia. If you take a closer look at the train station Judy departs from at Bunny Burrows, you might catch that the building is shaped exactly like Totoro, the mascot of Studio Ghibli and the star of My Neighbor Totoro. Totoro is also a rather fitting sight in the bunny town, as it shares some visual similarities with the long-eared mammal. So, it's an appropriate reference to make if you ask me. The Chief is either a colossal Disney nerd or the source of so many coincidences that it'll make your head spin. The sheer number of references surrounding this guy is kind of nuts. For example, on his calendar, if you look closely, you'll notice that it features a picture of a cityscape. That is actually San Francisco from Big Hero 6, or maybe from Pig Hero 6, if we're talking about the Zootopia universe. Another example, as he was laying into Judy, he says this line. Life isn't some cartoon musical where you sing a little song and your insipid dreams magically come true. So let it go. Now, obviously, this is a direct reference to Frozen, a cartoon musical where a character sings a little song, which kinda sorta causes dreams to come true. Sort of. Arguably. Of course, we're talking about the song Let It Go, which does end with Elsa having a magical ice castle, and if that's not a dream coming true, I don't know what is. 
There are a lot of different ways that eagle-eyed viewers may have been able to figure out that Assistant Mayor Bellwether is the secret bad guy of the movie. But one that was a little bit more innocuous is something that came up a bit earlier on in the movie. At one point, we got to see a quick shot of Bellwether's desk. While upon first viewing, our eyes were probably drawn to either the phone or the coffee mug with the most legit bit of personalization I've ever seen. However, sitting next to the phone is a rather mundane looking sticky note. That sticky note features a phone number, presumably belonging to someone named Doug. You know who Doug is? The hitman sheep we see later on doing Bellwether's dirty work. The answers were hiding in plain sight the entire time. Oh, I'm more of a glorified secretary. I think Mayor Lionheart just wanted the sheep vote. Mr. Big, the mafia boss whose small stature is played largely for laughs, is honestly the most dangerous character in the entire movie. And that wouldn't come as a surprise to any hardcore animal lovers in the audience, who know a little bit about the actual species of rodent the Mr. Big is. You see, he is an arctic shrew, an animal that is often described as a vicious predator, eating around three times their body weight on average. These little dudes are even known to chow down on other shrews. What a bunch of little monsters. I guess then that it is pretty appropriate to have an arctic shrew play the part of a dangerous crime lord. Don't get on his bad side, or he's likely to eat you. Rough stuff. Say hello to grandmama. I some. There are a lot of different animals throughout Zootopia. Wolves, bison, rabbits, otters, foxes, pretty much every kind of critter that you're likely to imagine. Well, okay, there is one type of creature that is missing that you might not have even realized. There are no apes living within Zootopia. This was actually due to a conscious decision made by the filmmakers. They felt that primates were too similar to humans, which is pretty fair. Honestly though, if I didn't just point out this fact to you, would you have even noticed? Zootopia is already so diverse with so many different species running around, living their lives in the thriving metropolis, so not having any monkeys or apes doesn't really do anything to diminish the landscape, in my opinion. When people think of Disney and cartoons, odds are the very first character that comes to mind is Mickey Mouse. Which makes sense, he is an icon and Disney's branding is largely built around the cute little rodent. But did you know that there was another big-eared character in the early days of the House of Mouse? I'm talking of course about Oswald the Rabbit, a character that was also created by Walt Disney way back in the day. After Mickey was pushed to the forefront, this long-eared mascot quickly fell by the wayside, largely disappearing into obscurity and being relegated to small appearances here or there, or as a secondary protagonist in a random Mickey Mouse video game. However, as a part of Disney's history, Zootopia paid homage to this little guy as a piece of graffiti on the side of a train that can be seen while Judy and Nick are investigating the disappearance of Emmett Otterton. He may not ever be as big of a deal as Mickey, but Oswald will at the very least always be remembered by hardcore Disney fans, or those who watch this video. Speaking of Disney icons, I personally cannot think of any character more iconic within Disney's stable of movie characters than the genie from Aladdin. For obvious reasons, I feel. The blue dude is easily the most memorable part of that entire movie, due in large part to Robin Williams' fantastic performance. So, naturally, that means that there is a reference to him within Zootopia. During the sequence where Judy and Nick visit Yaks the Yak, if you look closely, you can see that Genie's lamp is on a shelf in the background. This raises two questions. First, why did Judy not just grab that thing and give it a rub to see if she could just wish for the answers she was looking for? And second, if we did see a Zootopia version of Genie, what kind of animal would he appear as? I'm guessing a bird. Cause you know, Robin, laugh. I'm funny, damn it. Are you looking at me? Did you rub my lamp? Did you wake me up? I've already pointed out quite a few Frozen connections within Zootopia, so why don't I take a second here to point out a few more, just for good measure. You know Duke Weaselton, the weasel portrayed by Alan Tudyk who sells those knockoff Disney movies I talked about way back in entry number one? Well, in Frozen, Tudyk plays yet another Duke, only that time the character is actually a Duke. The Duke of Weaselton, actually. And Tudyk is not the only Frozen actor to make a small appearance. Anna herself, Kristen Bell, has a very small cameo during the DMV sequence as Priscilla the Sloth, a role she was probably more than happy to take on considering the fact that Bell has publicly stated that she absolutely adores sloths. And I mean, come on, look at those guys. They are just adorable. Who doesn't like sloths? Okay, here's a joke that I guarantee flew over the heads of every single kid in the audience 
and probably gave quite a few of their parents anxiety laughs. At one point, we see a really quick reference to the Lemming Brothers Bank. This is a blatant reference to Lehman Brothers Holdings, an American financial services firm that famously filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2008 as part of the subprime mortgage crisis, and was actually the largest bankruptcy filing in US history. It was a really bad time, trust me. Ah, crap, I'm old. Anyways, it might have also been a tongue-in-cheek nod to a sequence from White Wilderness, a Disney documentary, and I say documentary with the heaviest quotation marks I can possibly put on the word, that claimed that lemmings would commonly unalive themselves by throwing themselves off of cliffs, something they definitely do not do. It's probably not actually a reference to that, though. Disney doesn't exactly like even admitting that that movie existed, but, you know, you see lemmings in a Disney movie, someone somewhere is gonna have to bring it up eventually. If that last entry made you sad, whether you were thinking of the lemmings nosediving off of cliffs or the 2008 financial crisis, know that you're not alone in being bummed out. During the scene where Nick and Judy are spying on Doug the Hitman sheep, if you look closely at his map, you might notice that one of the pictures that is pinned to it is of a wolf sitting forlornly on a park bench. This image looks strikingly similar to this image of actor Keanu Reeves that went viral a few years back, spawning the sad Keanu meme format. I wonder if that wolf is sitting there thinking about all of the money that he lost when the Lemming Brothers bank went under. All right, that's enough about being bummed out by financial crap that our audience doesn't give a hoot about. Most of the people watching this were probably still in diapers when that happened anyways. Did I mention that I'm old? Here's a joke for all the science nerds in the audience. Come on, I know there are at least a few of you out there. While our protagonists are talking to Duke Weaselton, if you look in the background, you can spot a sign for Thigmotaxis. This is a reference to Thigmotaxis, a biology term that refers to the way an organism responds when exposed to a touch stimulus. It's a whole thing that I don't really understand, but hey, I'm sure there's someone somewhere who found that wordplay funny. Maybe the guys who wrote it, at least. Hops! Speaking of wordplay and kind of corny jokes when you think about it, if you take a close look at the money used within Zootopia, you might notice that instead of a great old man with wooden teeth on the $1 bill, there's instead a male deer. A buck. Get it? There's a buck on the $1 bill. A buck on a buck. Okay, it's funny and I don't care what any of you have to say about it. 40, there you go. Way to work that diaper, big guy. Remember earlier on when I mentioned that Judy seemed to have an iPod Nano 6th generation? That must mean that Apple exists within the world of Zootopia, right? Well, yes and no. At one point, we got a look at the back of Judy's phone. If you look closely, where most people would expect to see the iconic apple with a bite taken out of it, instead, there's a carrot with a bite taken out of it. That's not the only animal-themed reskinning of an Apple product that we see in the film. If you look closely when Judy's parents FaceTime her, it's not actually called FaceTime. Instead, it's muzzle time. Cause you know, animals have muzzles. No one ever said that all these jokes are winners, okay? Okay, so let's talk for a second about Nick's scheme that he was putting on the very first time that we were introduced to him in the movie. Basically, he gets a hold of a giant elephant-sized popsicle, melts it down, turns the liquid into lollipops that he sells to lemmings, then takes the used sticks that were tossed into recycling bins to a construction site where he sells them to the foreman as building materials. Now answer me this, what part of that plan is actually illegal? I mean, sure, the way he goes about getting a hold of the popsicle at the very beginning of it is at least a little sus. And he does technically mislead the construction foreman about what kind of wood the sticks actually are. But beyond that, no part of his scheme is actually a scheme. He acquired legally obtained goods, which he broke down and repackaged in a way that was easily consumable by a larger group of individuals, and just slapped a price on it that allowed him to make a cool profit off of it. That's literally capitalism 101. Okay, so maybe the way in which he melted the popsicle down isn't exactly up to health codes, but come on, it's a kid's movie. I'm sure if this was real life and not operating off of cartoon logic, he'd do that in a more sanitary manner than letting it roll off the top of some dude's roof. I guess he did commit tax fraud there though, but I mean, really, come on, it's a victimless crime. Just let him have it. Besides, Judy lets it slide after he agrees to work with her, so, you know, must not be that big of a deal in the Zootopia world. 
Hey there everybody, I'm John Alditz, I made this video and I want to know what you think. Did you catch these hidden details in Zootopia? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or go ahead and shoot me a response over on Twitter, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Screen Rant for even more great videos just like this in the future.